If you're easily offended, you've come to the right place. I enjoy easy targets. Well, anyway, you've been warned. While I'm not certain, because he's been given credit for a lot of other stuff, a lot of other people said, like the coldest winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco, I think it was Mark Twain who wrote the story about a poor white southerner who bragged he was descended from royalty. From the look and manner of the man, most thought his claim was a royal overstatement. But it turned out to be true. He was descended from royalty, an African chief. Not exactly the kind of nobility a white in the 19th century Deep South could relate to, or be related to. Anyway, I thought about that story after doing a bit of research that showed I am a Negro. Okay, before African Americans were African Americans or black Americans, they were Negroes or colored people, not to be confused with people of color. And from the time Negroes got their vote after the Civil War, they voted Republican. Lincoln was a Republican. Lincoln freed the slaves. Who would you vote for? They voted that way till President Herbert Hoover ran for a second term. Today, Hoover is best known for the Hoover Dam and, of course, as the inventor of the upright vacuum cleaner. However, in 1932, Hoover was known for Hoovervilles. Shanty towns where many formerly middle class, now homeless Americans were forced to shelter during the Great Depression, which was kicked off by his presidency. Anyway, according to factcheck.org, a nonpartisan, nonprofit project of the Annenberg Public Policy Center of the University of Pennsylvania, whew, an organization that monitors political factual accuracy, it was to defeat Hoover that Negroes started voting solidly for Democrats. And Negroes continued voting Democratic for the next three decades. But aside from school desegregation, which was ordered by the Supreme Court, not the Democratic Party, what did Democrats do for Negroes for the 30 years from 1932 to the first major legislation benefiting African Americans, the Civil Rights Act of 1964? Well, not much. So why was the Democratic Party able to count on the Negro vote? Well, who the hell else were they going to vote for? Last election, I voted for President Obama because he made a number of promises that resonated with me. Of that list, what has he done for me? He sent Osama bin Laden for a dirt nap in the Arabian Sea. And there's health care. Okay, it wasn't universal, single-payer, and there are enough loopholes for insurance and drug companies to make you sick. But it passed. And there's also... Well, that's about it. On the other hand, Mr. Obama, who has the charisma of John Kennedy and the rhetorical flourish of Winston Churchill, let extreme conservatives, who can barely manage more than monosyllables, with tutoring, set the nation's agenda. So instead of fixing infrastructure to create jobs, talk is of balanced budgets and tax cuts and killing entitlements people are entitled to. Oil companies drive drivers dotty, driving prices up, when there's an abundance of oil, and driving them up when there's a scarcity. Wars continue, and nobody can quite say what the point is now that bin Laden's been blasted. People who got bailed out of debt instead of jail are still running the financial institutions that are running roughshod. So who am I voting for in the next election? Mr. Obama. Like the Negro voters of the 30s, 40s, and 50s, who the hell else am I going to vote for? I am a Negro. This is Don Laskin, and that was Observations.